Put a speck of dust and you throw it through a lamp, you can see it so clearly. Like when you have your light spotlight shining down, you see a little piece of dust flying by, you see it so easily because it's coming into the light. Everything that comes into the light is manifest. But you take that piece of dust and you just throw it through like regular air or whatever, every day to day without any lamps, just a regular day to day. You aren't, you're not going to see the dust, probably not. It's the same thing with Holy Spirit, just allowing him to put his searchlight on you. God, if there's anything in me that is displeasing to you, remove it now. Put your searchlight upon us, God, in Jesus' name. Let us see clearly if there's anything in our lives that is displeasing to you. Just we give it away freely in Jesus' name. We don't want serpent food. Like just that's like having like serpent bait all over you so that the snakes can come and bite you. You don't want that. You know, God made Adam's body from the dust of the earth, you know, and then it became serpent food because God said you're gonna on your belly you shall crawl and dust shall be your food all the days of your life. So let's just get rid of all the dust. You know a good way to get rid of dust is take a bath. <laughs> Jump into the river of life and just just go for it. All that dust, is it's not allowed in there. <laughs> that fallen nature, it just gets washed off you. All the things of the world just get washed off you. And it feels good. <laughs> I love to feel the presence of God surging through my entire body, soul, and spirit and atmosphere where everything is just like electrified. God is glorified. And there's waves of glory just flowing through your very being. Well, how does that happen? Well, maybe just opening up wider, letting God come to you and through you even more. I was talking about a vision that I saw the other day that I didn't get to talk about, and I was just reminded of just now again, so I think God wants you guys to hear this. This was one of my first revelations of the cross. Like, I didn't know. All I knew is like, yeah, Jesus died on a cross. And, uh, and, uh, we, we get clean, like he took our sin and yeah, he did it for us. But I went to this meeting, it was a youth retreat or something like that. I was just a brand new believer. I don't know, maybe half a year old in the Lord. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I think this was even my first vision. It was, and it, oh, the such, the such spiritual fruit that transformed me. It physically it hurt for three days after this. I don't know if that was a sign and a wonder or just my own stupidity, but I'll tell you what happened. We were in this church and, uh, whoa, <laughs> we're in this church. <laughs> just give me a sec, man. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are the church. Yes, we are the church. Hallelujah. The church gathered together in a building one day because <laughs> we didn't want uh, the elements of rain and you know all that stuff to interfere with our spiritual encounters. <laughs> we didn't want to be distracted by the rain, so we had a building. We had a roof overhead, and uh, the worship was okay. I don't know, whatever. Just worship is worship. Some guy at a piano singing vineyard songs. It was cool. And then the preacher comes out. I, I don't even know who this guy was, but he comes out. He's like, God is over here. God is in the front. Like, oh, okay. I don't see him though. And whoever wants God, come to the front. <laughs> and uh, nobody moved, man. We're all young people, right? We're all like, and, uh, you know, teenagers. And you know, I was like a young adult. I don't remember how old I was, like 20 something. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, nobody comes to the front. I, I don't know if we did. Nobody believes him. So he's like, didn't you hear me? God is here and he's at the front. Who wants God? Come to the front. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have any theology or anything. I didn't have any understanding at all. I did know one thing that God said that he was inside of that man years ago. That was the first time God ever spoke to me in a uh, audible voice in the spirit but this guy was saying god was at the front so i'm like well if god's at the front we should go get god let's go get god i was like isn't that what we're supposed to do like we come 
to these meetings to to get God, you know. <laughs> I didn't know that we already had God, but I could get more of God, you know. Uh, so my my friend beside me, I was like, let's go get God, man. <laughs> He's this big Chinese guy. He's like, no, man. I'm like, come on, man. Did you, did you hear what he said? He said God's at the front. Let's go get. I'm pulling on him. He's like, no, 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 no. Fine, whatever. You stay there, then. I'm going to get God, and I went to go get God. <laughs> And uh, there was already some people lined up there. They, they ran ahead of me. They were more hungry than me, I guess. But God saw something. <laughs> and he revealed something so beautiful and so amazing that I've never forgotten every detail of it. I got up to the front and uh, I was like, whoa. Boom. Just, he was right. The presence of God just hit me. Boom. It went right through me. I totally forgot about everything, everybody, and everything in the meeting. And I don't even remember if there was music playing or not. All I just knew was like, boom, I was in this other realm. But I was still aware that I was me, but I was in a different realm. And I was like, I was like, I saw him. It was Jesus, and he was on the cross. And I was like, he was on the cross, he was like this. And I saw the blood dripping from his feet. And it landed right here, boom, turned into a tear and rolled off my cheek. And here comes another one. It's like, oh my gosh. I put my hands up and as soon as the blood hit my, my, uh, my cheek, it rolled off as a tear in perfect sync, boom, just over and over again. His blood just kept dripping off. Like as soon as it would hit my cheek in the spirit realm, it would roll off in perfect sync into the natural realm as a tear. I was like, whoa. I just met my heart just oh melted broke like you did this for me it was personal it was not just some public thing it was like this was Jesus revealing himself to what he did for me I could feel the love I could see the like the price like there's no words and uh I was like I just wanted to touch him so I put my hands up I was like Aah! I was stretching as hard as I could and it physically hurt me. Because so I'm like, because I don't know anything. I don't know this was a vision. <laughs> I thought I was there. Like, I thought I was at the, I don't know. I'm like, Argh! for three days, I think I put my arm almost out of its socket. I don't know. It was sore for three days, both of them. Like, my shoulders and just this part. I don't know what part. It was just sore for three days. But during the vision, like, I'm just experiencing the cross, what he did for me the love like just pff, the price just not, your heart just breaks and you just love him more because you feel his love why he did it coming through and it just perfect synchronicity of like yeah we're spirit and we're in the natural realm <laughs> body soul and spirit everything was just in perfect sync with god and then i like after i come out of that like the vision kind of wrapped up and lifted off and i'm still there I'm like he's gone i'm like oh and I, I, I hurt myself and all of a sudden like from all these tears this big woman like she's a big woman i'm saying she looked like about 400 pounds for a woman and uh she went boom she she hit me when she landed on me like on my leg 400 pound woman <laughs> it it kind of, whoa, it took me by surprise. And I looked down and she, her cheeks were flapping. Like, psh, psh, ah, ha, ha. And it's like she had the joy of the Lord all over her. And her face, the way, it was like the waves of glory were spilling from her cheeks. And it was hitting me. And I, I looked at her and I went from like, like the greatest <laughs> experience I've ever had in my life. And I got hit with glory waves of joy at my feet. This woman, man, just flapping at my feet. And it hit me. I was like, ha! You know, laughter. That you cannot... Like, there was tears, stuff coming out of my nose, and laughter. Every emotion was on overdrive. And that's what Jesus paid for. <laughs> For the joy set before him is why he went to the cross. It was the joy set before him. <laughs> and he stepped into it. What did he see? Many sons coming into glory. He was the first. 
You know, he was the first fruits of the of many sons who would come into glory. He had to enter and through his sufferings enter into glory. And then he brought many sons into glory, just like that seed that goes into the ground and dies. But if it dies by itself, it like if it oh, I can't remember the scripture right now. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit and the fruit reproduces after its kind. So I remember that experience like, man, the cross. I had more than one like experience after that about the cross. Jesus was teaching me about the cross. I didn't have very, I'm still kind of slow, but he's, he teaches me over and over again until I get it. And another time I was like, I was in a meeting like this, like just in the worship. And I have my hands out stretched like this and I'm like singing songs to God I usually don't sing the songs that are on the overheads because I get bored <laughs> I I make up my own words and I just sing my own melody sometimes I follow the melody sometimes I'll sing a harmony I like to be creative so he's just wired me differently so I just I don't kind of fit in the box I kind of like have to stretch it a little bit wider so we can go a little bit deeper and <laughs> so I'm, I'm just like this I'm like singing this song to the Lord making up my own words and uh, I went into a vision and I saw it wasn't it wasn't me I saw myself like this but then it turned into Jesus and I was on the cross and then it turned into me like I was on the cross and then it turned back into Jesus and he was on the cross. I'm like, oh, I stopped it. I'm like, oh God, forgive me. Please forgive me. That was, I don't want to ever touch that. That You did that. That's you on the cross. I'm not supposed to be on the cross. <laughs> I didn't know anything, man. I'm just a baby. I'm growing, right? So I'm like, and then later on he revealed to me, he's like, yeah, I, I, you're crucified with me. <laughs> Nevertheless, like, he lives through me, you know, when I die, I die to my sin nature, I die to myself and his life comes flooding through every area that I, that I give to him. Everywhere, everything that I yield to God becomes God's uh, and he can just flow through that, you know. <laughs> when, when Moses yielded down his stick to the Lord, God told him to lay it down and Moses picked it up again and became the rod of God and he used that stick to split the sea and to, to deliver an entire nation instead of just leading a couple sheep. It became, the rod, it became the rod of God. When you lay down your life, <laughs> your life becomes the Lord's. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit where he comes and lives and dwells and moves in you and just flows through you. It oozes through you and it's glorious. So whatever you lay down for the Lord, he, he just makes it better. Because it becomes his. You become his temple. You become his battle axe. You become his flaming arrows that he can shoot and start blazing fires all over the earth and kill demons, you know. You can become a weapon in the hands of the Lord. And uh, you could all, whatever, fire him off. Shaka. <laughs> yeah, I hope that blessed you guys. Listen, the testimony of Jesus, the true testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I just declare over all of you guys that you can have experiences like this and you will have experiences like this. When you step out of faith, when someone has the word of the Lord and you just step in by faith into that thing, what they say, if the spirit bears witness with your spirit, what they're saying is true, then step into that and you'll have similar experiences. Come on, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The stuff is all backed by scripture. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, it's all full of people having visions, dreams, revelations, God speaking. It's relationship. The Bible is a relational book. If you don't have a relation with, relationship with God, you're not going to really understand it. You'll just understand it naturally, which like the Pharisees did, who didn't know God. And they died and they don't get eternal life. <laughs> but those who read the Bible with the mind of Christ, it's like you're sharing. Uh, he's just whispering into your heart mysteries, nuggets, stuff like the, that he's going to, that he's done for you, that he's going to do for you and what he's doing for you. Like he just, that book is amazing. I love the word of God. I love the Bible. I love the author of the Bible because he explains it to me, to us, because we're one body, you know. So just read it in the spirit. Sometimes you got to slow down and then you read it, you read like one verse and then you're just like, okay, that just, that just went over my head. So you stop, you read it every word slowly and you just like, just wait for the spirit to make it pop out. 
<clears throat> and then that's called a, like I call it a nugget or a revelation when the spirit reveals what that means and it just becomes your manna it's your daily bread your daily bread is the presence and the revelation it's daily it's called your daily bread your manna come down from heaven it's it's heaven's food it's revelation is how you you grow spiritually by eating revelation first you start off by drinking milk you just like you know you suck the whole Bible, take the whole Bible in. You don't have much revelation. You don't have much understanding. But the more you just take it all in. And then the Spirit, you start building your relationship with the Spirit. And then He reveals what, what you've already ingested. And what you take in fresh. So it's like the old and the new becomes fresh. Because as you get the new, the old ties into it. It's like a dovetail. And you could just... It's, oh man, it all just fits together beautifully. It's like the way God built the, the spiritual houses. You know, all the stones fit together. Well, it's kind of like that with the nuggets, the rocks, the revelation that you get from the Word of God. They all tie together and they all point to Him. Every revelation of the Word of God should point to the Word of God Himself. <laughs> you know, if it leads to something else, then I don't know. Let's put a question mark there. Like, you know whatever I want everything in my life to be to point to him and if it doesn't point to him then it's probably it's like dead and it's like it's just temporal it's not really gonna have any eternal value uh, <laughs> so it's best just to lay on the altar lay on the altar and let him pour that put that searchlight on you the Holy Spirit searchlight Holy Spirit put your searchlight upon the body right now if you see any dust there, God, just wash it away with the rivers of life. That you be our the greatest desire of our heart, the greatest desire of our emotions, the greatest desire of our, our body. We want to feel God. <laughs> we don't want to feel the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and all that other filth. We want the purity of the life of God surging through our very being. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Not for the God that I met way back there when I said a sinner's prayer 20 years ago. <laughs> but he's ever living. He's the same yesterday, today, and he will be forever. Power, glory, you know, manifest shaka, you know, <laughs> heavy weighty glory where you just can't even move. You just lay there just with your mouth open. Sometimes drool might slip out. Sometimes a tear will roll out. Sometimes you get a belly laugh. Some, whatever, whatever, because your body can't really handle certain levels of glory. Because that's why we need a new body. He's going to give us a new body. I think that's the body of Christ. I don't know yet, but I'm pretty sure we'll put on a new body. Because <laughs> this one, I don't know, it's good. It's pretty good. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, but I think he's got something better. Because I don't, I don't like shaving. I just want to be able to like decree like a chiseled beard. And, see, look at this. I got like spots here and patches there. Yeah, I can't, I can't grow a good beard. It's not perfect. And everything in heaven is perfect. It's like every beard is chiseled out to perfection. <laughs> now, this is the first time. Well, I tried to grow a beard a few times and man, it just looks like a mess. It looks like a bunch of spider legs sticking out of my face and I can't, man, I'm missing. I don't know why it doesn't grow in some spots. I got a something removed there when I was younger, but whatever, enough enough about me. Fire on my life, God. Oh, God, put to death the deeds of the flesh in Jesus' name. But uh, yeah, we need the new body, God, quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you guys uh, have any, like, experiences with Jesus? Experiences with the Father? Experiences with the Holy Spirit? You should speak about those things, even if no one's around. There's no one around here. We got Tigger and we got Mickey Mouse over there. And uh, we got my neighbors and my wife will be back soon. And uh, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, a host of the holy angels. And uh, yeah, but just in this room, it's just me and all the hosts of heaven. <laughs> but they're in a different dimension. But when you speak, <laughs> when you speak about spiritual things, it, it like 
it, it attracts the spirit realm. So if you speak about angels through your experience or you speak about God, the presence of God comes, you speak about perverted things and then filth fills the air. You speak about holy things and holy things fill the air. So, you know, set your affections on things above and speak about those things, you know, and also... Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is holy, whatsoever is like good report, think on these things. Why are you going to think on those things? Because usually what you think about, you speak about. I noticed like, I started lifting weights the other day. I know you can't tell, but uh, I would tell, I'd be talking to my wife about lifting weights and stuff like that. And uh, I don't even think she really cares, like whatever, man. <laughs> but uh it's like what you think about, what you meditate on, which is that's what you're going to talk about. So when you when you think about things that are pure, things that are holy, things that are true, are of good report, your words will come out speaking about those things and those things will, it'll attract those things to you. That's why you don't think about like all the uh, deception, <laughs> lies, you don't meditate on a lie. Why would you want to meditate on the lie? Set your effects on things above, man. There's no lie up there. You don't want to meditate on like a pornographic thought in your mind. That's that's going to attract lust demons and you're just going to get in bondage. You want to meditate on the Lord. <laughs> meditate on his good works. Remember. And as you remember this, oh, I remember that God. I just talked to him about it. Like God, remember that time when we were playing hide and go seek and I was just laying on my bed and the presence of God came and just... And, and then the presence of God lifted and I'm like, God, where did you go? And then I was searching for you, God. <laughs> you know, you just, just talk to God about the, if you never had those encounters, like God, you gave all these encounters to Enoch. God, you gave all these encounters to Moses. God, you gave all these encounters to Ezekiel. Just all the pulling them up into the mid heavens by the lock of his hair. He gave all these encounters to Paul who got caught up to the third heaven. He wasn't allowed to speak these certain words, you know. It's not lawful for a man to utter. It's like, God, you gave all these encounters to John. Why did you give these encounters to John and not to me? You're no respecter of persons. I want these encounters, God. And he will respond. You know, it's, it's good to talk to your dad. It's good to talk to your that in the spirit because that's his native language and that's your native language too if you become born again and if you're not born again then it's simple God take my life take my heart I receive the blood of Jesus to wash away my sins I receive you as my savior and I and I command every other false God in my life to be depart from me I evict you I renounce you in Jesus name Jesus is my God. Jesus is my King. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for rescuing me. Now deliver me from all these other false gods that I've worshipped my whole life. I give my life to you, God, in Jesus' name. Something like that. It's just giving your life to God. <laughs> the blood of Jesus washes all your sins away. The enemy will come back and try to lie to you and say that well no that what you said isn't true well blah, blah. So he always because he's so full of unbelief he doesn't even believe the stuff he says anyway so he's confused just ignore those thoughts whatever is pure think on those things whatever is true because you spoke the truth from your heart saying that i want god to be my savior and he is and he responds by spirit your heart <laughs> your mind is your soul <laughs> Your mind, your, your mind your, is your soul, your, your will and your emotions, that's your soul. Your spirit is like your heart life. The, the, the deepest core of, you, of who you are as, as like a person is your spirit. And a lot of people just bury that <laughs> under the world, like the dust of the world just buries the, who they are and sin buries them. I remember I was in this one meeting one time, Shabba. And uh, this guy was preaching Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he was saying, like, some of you are inches away from having an encounter with God. And he's like, just run your fingers along the ripple of that holy place curtain. And just, as soon as you find the opening, dive right in because you're going to have an encounter with God. And the presence of God just came really strong. The presence of God just filled the atmosphere where not just 
dot inside of me, but it was around me and inside of me, going through me. And everyone, like people around me, were crying. And uh, I started crying because the presence of God got so strong. It was like I never felt this much love, in intangibly, in a corporate place before, except for when I was a little boy. And I remember I just went into a vision instantly, and God was showing me all the sins. That of why I was going to church, it was just to meet with girls. I wanted to get a girlfriend, and uh, I had lust in my heart. And he was even he was showing like the motives of my heart. And he was like, but it was like it wasn't in a condemnation way. Like you're a sinner. Look at all these things. It was like, look at this. That is what's blocking me from encountering you. That's what's blocking you from from me. It's your it's these sins. It's these thought patterns. You come to you should come to these meetings hungry to meet with me instead of hungry to meet a wife or a, a girlfriend or to look at the girls and look at you know lust after them like look at me you can have an encounter with me and that like the sins are what block us from God and that's what kind of broke my heart and I realized wow I've been wasting all this time going to church looking at girls am I, I was supposed to be be the church and go to these meetings to encounter God. And so that changed everything in my life. After I had that encounter, I repented right there. I thank God that he, because he rebuked me in love. It was such love there that I wanted to get rid of the stuff because I wanted more of the love of God. It just, it was like warm oil going right through your entire being, soothing everything and washing, pulling away that darkness that lustful spirit and that, that uh, whatever, all these filthy things. What happened? I came into the light. Holy Spirit shined that light on that piece of dust. And it was like really clear. You could see it. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's get rid of that. <laughs> let's get rid of that. Let's stay in the light. And let's keep walking in the light. Like ch is children of light. <laughs> God, the light of the Lamb is what lights up in heaven. We have no need for the sun because the lamb is the light thereof, you know? So he will enlighten things and the Holy Spirit will highlight certain things that need to go in our lives if we just allow him, if you want God, you know? So I'm like, I, I repented right there and I started going to this, uh, this place called Glad Tidings. Every, like I would go to four meetings every Sunday because I thought God was in church like the, I like the corporate anointing. There's your personal anointing and then there's a corporate anointing wherever two or three are gathered and then whenever you're gathered in your prayer closet. It, it's pretty much the same, but it's like sometimes it's harder to break through in public places because you got to deal with all their stuff. Sometimes it's easier to break through in public places because everyone's already broken through. And uh, Shabbat. Holy Spirit, a second. And uh, what did I say? Oh yeah. So I would go to this this place called Glad Tidings. It was a church in uh, Vancouver, and it was a big church. <clears throat> and uh, I went there, and this guy prophesied over me. He's like, "Come here, and uh, I'm gonna show you like a bunch of amazing things." And it was the Lord, the presence of God was there. So I'm like, "Okay, so I'm supposed to go here for a while." I left this small little Chinese Pentecostal church, and then went to this non-denominational church. You know what? All these name tags, Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Methodist, Jehovah's Witness, Buddhist, <laughs> Muslim, all are relevant. The old, there's only one church. It's Christ. It doesn't matter what you put on the building on the outside. The building's not the church. The church is who gathers in the spirit inside those buildings. <laughs> Whoever is in Christ is in the church. <laughs> It's his body. There's only one body. It's the body of Christ and Christ is spirit. So whoever's in the spirit is at the church. So it's not whoever gathers around a denomination or a name tag. Okay, clear. Bam. Okay. So I went to this place to gather in the spirit. And this guy prophesied over me and told me like, yeah, come here. I'm going to show you amazing things. And, and uh, I did. I started going there every Sunday. I was a Sunday only Christian. <laughs> Live for myself during the weekdays. I was new, right? But uh, I wasn't going there to look at girls. I was going there to look for God. And boy, did he show up. 
boy, did that manifest presence that I met, like in that room where he put his spotlight on me, he was there every Sunday. But he, he wired me weird because I would go there. I would never sing the song. Well, I would sometimes. I, would, like, I wouldn't sing what's on the overheads. I would make up my own words. And I'd be laying on the carpet sobbing. And everyone else is dancing around and I'm like just, but I'm having visions and revelations and I'm like seeing the heavens and I'm like, I'm seeing in the spirit water flying out of my hands, landing and watering all these kids around me. And, um, and then I just like get on the floor and just ball again. I was a big baby. What was God saying with the hands and the water? We we're singing this song. It was really happy. And you're like, uh. I was dancing around too with like with this, with this water shooting out of my hands. It was like God's going to use my hands. It's Psalm, what is it, 144? Weapons of War. Here, let's read it. God started giving me songs to write. I was writing, like he gave me songs to, uh, I'd write a song and then he would give me like, I don't know, he just gave me songs, right? I'd write a song and I would play it and then pfft, the anointing the sauce would come because I laid just like Moses laid down his stick and then picked it up again became the rod of God God told me to lay down my guitar and I picked it up again and became his guitar these are his guitars they don't belong to me everything I have belongs to God and if I try to own it then well he has the right to destroy it to take it away God you have the right to do whatever you want I don't I just want turtle things so uh some Oh, there's a really good one in, in Jeremiah too, the battle axe of the Lord. Uh, Shabba. Yeah, take a drink break. Drink in the presence of the Lord. And you'll do good. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. How do you fight? You fight with the river of life. Blessed be the Lord my strength. I'm not my strength. It's the Lord is my strength. Blessed be the Lord my strength. Who teaches my hands to war. And my fingers to fight. How do you fight demons? You release the river of life through your gates. I think one of the Old Testament scriptures says the hit, his power is hidden within his hand or something like that. I can't remember where it is right now. But uh. Teaches his fingers to fight. Come on, David was a worshiper. Let's read it a little bit more. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, <laughs> and my deliverer. So he didn't even put his own trust in himself to deliver himself from Saul who was pursuing him. But the Lord was his deliverer. Shakari Karama. My shield. And he in whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you make account of him? Man is like vanity. His days are as a shadow that pass away. <laughs> Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. <laughs> Glory clouds. Hallelujah. Yeah, I gotta touch the mountains. Hallelujah. <laughs> the smoke. We want to see the glory clouds, Lord. Fall the glory cloud by day and the fire by night. You need to be on fire every season of your life. Did you know that that fire was never to go out in the Old Testament in the lamps? And uh, it was getting dim in uh, the book of Samuel there. When baby Samuel... Baby Samuel. Well, baby Samuel, the word of the Lord was rare. It's because that lamp was going dim. And it was ne that lamp was never to go out that the, the high priest was supposed to look after. And he was losing his vision. You need to, you're the candle of the Lord, right? You're the light of the world. A light that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, it's there to manifest forth his his good works, the goodness of God, the power of God, so that all men will glorify your Father in heaven. <laughs> oh, Shaka. Your fire, the first love gate is never to go out. You gotta water it daily. 
And then you get your manna from heaven, your daily bread. That's where you get stronger in the Lord. The Lord is your strength when you have your daily manna, your, your manna sent down from heaven every day. Or you just go in heaven to eat. Feast on the Lamb. <laughs> where am I? Oh, yeah, they shall smoke the mountains. Or the mountains shall smoke. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children <laughs> whose mouth speak vanity and their right hand is a hand of right is a right hand of falsehood. Listen to this. I will sing a new song. 144 is a new song. I see that a lot. 144, that number. Well, I'll tell you about it in a second. Shabbat, where am I? I will sing a new song unto you, O God. Upon a psaltery and instruments of ten strings, I will sing praises unto you. Singing a new song is kind of what I did when I would go to those meetings. Like, they would sing an old song. It might have been a new song. It might even have been just written that morning. But I, it would just, it would, to me, it was newer. <laughs> I would just make up a newer song right on the spot. A singing praise to God. And, w like, what happened? I got equipped. It's like, I was equipped in the spirit to release the rivers of living water being poured through me. I just became like this, like a hose, you know, Holy Spirit. You become like a hose and the Lord just turns on the water. Like some people are a garden hose. Some people are a straw with this, just blows a little bit of water through. Some people are like a fire truck hose where he takes a whole bunch just to stabilize the river coming out, you know. He's probably got some angels there just trying to, whoa, he's just spraying everywhere, you know. <laughs> you know, the Bible does say that he will fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. So there's going to be a lot of glory, a lot of hoses. Hoses. <laughs> Even the hose will be a hose. Hallelujah. Because the, like, what do you say? The prostitutes will come in before the Pharisees. You know, all the people. <laughs> oh, man. Shabba. Hallelujah. <laughs> What happened to the woman at the well, the first evangelist? She was like, she left her pot aside and went went and told everybody about Jesus. They, she told him, like, he told me everything that I ever did and stuff like that. <sighs> she left her water pot aside. I think she had a dose of the hose. <laughs> she became a hose, <laughs> just releasing what God, what Jesus gave to her, you know. She had a taste of the bread of life. Holy Shabbat. I'm just remembering another vision right now. Wow. Okay. Let's just follow the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I was in another meeting just recently. Well, kind of recently, but uh, whatever. And we're in the midst of worship. And uh, like, man, the, I, the presence, whoa, Shabbat, the presence of God is life. I love the presence of God. I can't trade that for nothing. Nothing is worth that. Why? I don't want anything else of the world. I want the presence of God. He's everything to me. And I'm sitting in this meeting, worshiping God as the music's playing. I don't even remember what song it was. It doesn't matter. It's the spiritual experiences that, I, that matters, that I remember. And as I'm worshiping God, I saw a virtue of God that I knew existed and I've experienced before, but I've never seen in action before. Well, I did, but it was fresh to me. I don't know how to explain it, man. I'm not very good at explaining things, but I'll do my best. And uh, I saw Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. And all the Pharisees, they're angry. Like they were death. You can see the death in their eyes. They, wanna, they just want to kill, steal and destroy. Like they want to kill, kill. And uh, Jesus is there. He's writing on the ground. Well, no, actually, I can't remember the whole thing, but... Oh, help me, Lord. They're like, uh, you know, this woman was caught in adultery. The law says to stone her, but what do you say? And then um, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. And uh, it's funny because the very law says that she is to be stoned. You know the law of Moses? 
that was written with the finger of God. But his very finger was writing on the ground. It's like he's the lawgiver. He's the one who <laughs> sets reality. He's the one who sets justice. And he knew that he was going to the cross to pay for all of these things to give us a true nature, not just an outwardly manifestation, which the law did. It's like it cannot remove sin. It can only just, you know, had the power to show us our sins. But his but Jesus had the power, has the power to remove the sins. So that we can walk in the divine nature. We can walk in forgiveness. Because we are forgiven, we can forgive. Because <laughs> you know. So he's writing on the ground. I wonder if it's the very same finger that wrote on those tablets. It says the finger of God and Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah, what, 9 verse 6. He's God, man. There's no way around it. I don't care what any theologian or doctrine of devils <laughs> says. I've met Jesus and he's God, okay? <laughs> when you look into his eyes, you're not going to... There's there's no unbelief. It's, he's fully God. He's like he could... Nothing but love and eternity flowing through his eyes where he's just like... It's not even what he looks like. It's who he is that just melts you and just like... Gosh, he's awesome. Took me about three months before I could even talk about that experience when I saw him. I would just cry all the time. I would just try to, I saw Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. And uh, all the Pharisees and, you know, the lead religious leaders, they saw him writing down and he stood up. And one translation says, He who has never sinned, let him cast the first stone. And uh, they all began to get convicted of what, of their own sins. And, and then they began to leave. I think from the eldest to the least. I think the scripture says that. And then uh, they were leaving and then there was no one left. There was... Uh, it just frustrates me because like the very one who could have forgave them as they were feeling guilty, was standing right there, or was down right on the, st well yeah, he stood up. He was right there. Why are you going that way? He's right there. Jesus. See, what unbelief does and religion does, religion will push you away from Jesus in your self-righteousness. Relationship will always draw you closer to him. So they all left. It's just the woman and Jesus standing there. And then uh, Jesus says to her, has no one accused you or something like that? Is there no one left to accuse you? And she's like, no one. But this is what I saw in the vision. I saw him looking at her and then his tears, like just this utter unconditional love. As Jesus looked at her, he said like, go and sit no more. Go and sit no more. There was tears. I was like, whoa, I was so floored, I started crying. It's like he wasn't angry. He was broken that she would sin. Because sin is why he came. Sin is why he had to go to the cross so he could bring, him, bring her back, <laughs> bring humanity back. They all left, but she saw something that she will never never forget how could you go and sin some more when after you see the creator weep over you the very one who created you is weeping over you he's like he came for you if there was nobody else he would have still come just for you go and sin no more I'm like Oh, my heart just folded. I was like, man, sin is what separates us from God. And it breaks his heart.
because he will he loves unconditionally no matter what we've done his love doesn't change it's always being poured out to you and me it's always being poured out the love of God that passes all understanding yeah and so I came out of that like I was a mess after that I was like man in the Old Testament it's like they built a calf and stuff like that, and God didn't. God couldn't look at it. You know why? Because like sin breaks His heart. It's, you know, sin. It, it's. I don't know. I just saw that side of God, and it just man, I don't ever want to sin again. I want to. I want Him to be happy. Like you know, He's always happy. Like He's the happy God, but He does get grieved, and you know, I don't know, man. His, his emotions are different than a soulish emotions. Like we can cry over stuff and it's like, doesn't really mean much. It like, it means a lot, but like, yeah. To him, it's like a billion times more intense. Like, man, yeah, I, I, I wish I could portray what I saw. I wish I could, I mean, sometimes, like one time I, I, I went to the street church and I was, all I could do was cry. I just sat in my seat. I was, I knew I had to go lead worship. I was like, I have to reflect you. That's impossible. It's impossible. I've tasted and I've seen the goodness of God. I've tasted and I've seen the manifest presence of God, the glory of God, the, the love. Like I'm just remembering all the visions that right now that are going through my mind these encounters I have with God and I'm supposed to reflect you I'm just a piece of dust like one wave of your hand and I could be obliterated and you still choose to use mankind and you still choose us to do even greater works than Jesus did how is that possible I just cry Jesus said, greater work shall you do because I go to the Father. I think we need to go to the Father too. <laughs> like daily. Hallelujah. Yeah, so that's one of my greatest frustrations is you experience God and you see what's available for people and they just, they don't want it. And then so you want to like, you want to express what God is truly like to them. But you don't like have the capacity, so all you can do is die. <laughs> and then he can raise you up and then he lives through you freely. You know, not my will be done, God, but your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I guess this is about the cross. Okay, I'll tell you some more visions I have. One time I was lifting weights. It didn't work, but I tried. Maybe dead works. I don't know. I'm lifting weights in my room. And this song comes on. I had this uh, CDs that this lady gave me. Um, and the song was called uh, "Burn" or Obsession. It goes, And my heart burns for you. And it goes, na, 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 something like that. It's kind of weird when this other music's played, but... And then I saw like he, Jesus was on the cross again. I'm a baby believer. He's just teaching me about the cross and the love of God. And it's the, cro the cross is the power of God. It is. Because he took all so that we can walk in all the fullness of God. But I was like, I saw him on the cross. But it was so bizarre because I'm lifting weights and I'm breaking into a vision. Like right as I'm, <laughs> you know. And he goes, and my heart burns for you and he was singing to me on the cross that messed me up I knew why he went and my heart burns for you it's like man God just keeps slipping all these love nuggets to me just messing me messing me up so good I just can't go back to the world the world doesn't have anything for me when you've seen that much of God. 
What could the world offer you? All the houses, I got a mansion in heaven. All the women, I become a beautiful bride of Christ. <laughs> All the money, I got riches and glory. <laughs> What can the world offer me? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> was that? Love not the things of the world. Let love not the world and the things of the... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna drug off his love. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, the love of the Father is far greater than anything the world can give you. He's the one I want. The love of the Father is greater than... The greatest pleasures of sin for a season. <laughs> you know that Moses forsook the pleasures of sin for a season? He didn't care because he saw greater riches. He wanted to press in to God. <laughs> because there, the Bible does say that there is pleasures in sin. It's the pleasure of the flesh, the fallen nature. So you can become serpent food and they can come and chew on your flesh and devour you, destroy you. The pleasures of sin for a season. You know, adultery is fun until the very next, as soon as you're done, the devil comes and destroys you, destroys your marriage, destroys your children, destroys everyone's heart gets broken, destroys that marriage. You got this thing hanging over you of condemnation. You got all these demons chewing on you and just destroying you. Listen, there's pleasures in sin for a season, but it's only a season. I'd rather live in eternity. Live in God. <laughs> Live in life. I hate sin. Because it blocks me from life. Life more abundantly. It blocks me from God. And I don't want to break his heart. You know? I want God to trust me. Trust me with more of his love so that that love can just ooze into the world. And they can have encounters like... Like, that's available for everyone from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Adam had encounters with God. Come on. The <laughs> very first guy had, first man had encounters with God. You know, <clears throat> walking with God in the cool of the day. He got, Adam put, partook in the creation. The law of first mentions. Shabba, help me, Holy Ghost. <sighs> in Hebrew, a name is the nature of an animal. <laughs> That's why God would name like Abram became Abraham and uh, Sarah became or Sarah became Sarai. I can't even remember how that goes. Hallelujah. The guy who wrestled there, Jacob, became Israel. Oh, uh, you know, God would change names in the Bible. You know, Peter, Rock, and Petra. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus would change people's names because he would be decreeing their nature over them their destiny and stuff like that. So when Adam, God brought the animals to Adam and Adam named them, he was decreeing its nature, decreeing what it's like. He partook. God created the animals. <laughs> Adam decreed their natures and prophesied. Because in Hebrew, like, or whatever, it's the name is its nature. <laughs> you know? Uh, something like that. <laughs> so Adam had some pretty cool encounters with God. Hallelujah. They were like a team. And we're a team. We're workers together with Christ. What does that scripture say in Revelation? Uh, laborers together with Christ or something like that? Holy Spirit. Wow, there's so much. I love the Bible, man. I got the King James right now. I got other translations. I just like this one because this is... Uh, this is the first Bible I ever bought when I became like a brand new, brand new believer. I went out and I spent twenty dollars and I bought this one because it had where I could find the Bible, and find which book it is because I didn't know where they were. I always have to check the index and stuff. And this is the very first one I read, and it took me like six months to read it all the way through. My first uh, six months of serving God and chasing God and screwing up, and. Uh, so that's why I read it a lot. I like it a lot because I have stuff underlined in it. Um, yeah, shut up. I was gonna read you something. I don't know. I'm too tired to read right now. I've been going all day. Not all day, but 
we're cleaning up and stuff. I cleaned up my room. That's why we got Tigger here and Mickey Mouse over there. And you got a new little lungs of glory in there, breathing in the Ruach, living, breathing in the, <laughs> breathing in the living waters. Hallelujah. Well, I think I'm done right now. I was gonna make like a five-hour video. I'm just recording with my cell phone. Listen, man, you got a cell phone, you can share revelation. You can share your nuggets and your relationship with God. I'm just sowing what God's put in my life. So hopefully people out there will have an explosion and a breakthrough in their life so that they can walk in more than I'm walking in so that I can feed off of them, you know? So revelation will just come flowing out of you and I'll get blasted because I want the whole earth to be full of the glory of God. Revelation of the glory of God. These experiences are just nuggets from walking down the narrow road with God. You know, you're, you're, you're going to have experiences with God if you pursue Him. You draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. And when you guys meet in the Spirit, like heart to heart, body, soul, and spirit, everything is connected. When you're in perfect alignment with God, it's like, boom. You start having mega experiences that just transform you. And it's for everyone. It has to be because we have to go from glory to glory, ever beholding him and being changed into his image. How do you get changed into his image? You behold him. You may not always see right away. Maybe just you feel the presence of God. You may not even feel the presence of God already, but you need to. You need to. You need to get your gates cleaned. And that's just allowing God to put his searchlight on you. If there's anything in me, God, put it to death. I don't want, I don't want anything in me that displeases you. I just welcome your Holy Spirit. I know you're in me and I know you're around me. I just want to just meet with you in the heart. Just point your presence right into my spirit and like out through my spirit. Just like I'm just like floating through space as this piece of dust blasted in the glory of God. <laughs> I, oh, just yielding up all the members of my body, all to you. My hands are yours. If you want to shoot water out of them and just refresh other people, Glory to God. My mouth is yours. If you want to speak mysteries of the kingdom and encourage and root up, pull down and destroy all the works of the devil, then so be it. My eyes are yours. If you want me, I want to see with your eyes, Jesus. I want to see what you're seeing. Let me see the way you see. My heart is yours. I want the Father's heart to be beating through me. Just in perfect sync, just our hearts are beating together as one. You know, my teeth are yours. <laughs> this beard is yours, Lord. If you want to fix it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything I have is yours, God. <sighs> you know, one of the good songs to sing is I Surrender All. It's like an old hymn. I Sometimes I couldn't sing it. I'd be saying, like, man, I'm holding on to stuff. I'd have something in my heart against someone, and then I'm like, I surrender. I'm, I'm singing it like in the flesh. And then I realized like, wow, I want God. So then you just sing it again. I surrender all, I surrender. You know that song? And it's just a good prayer to go through. Like, Songs are prayers to me. They're prayers and they're decrees and they're keys to open the realms of heaven. Songs are just words accompanied by you know, uh, music. <laughs> to me, a song is an extension of my heart and it should connect to always to God. You know, whoa, man. Let's just practice the presence of the Lord for a while. I've been talking long enough. You've been listening long enough. Just tune me out and just go into the presence of the Lord and just receive from Him. He's more relevant than any person on this planet. God, we just welcome your presence. You're already here, but we just want more. We want deeper relationship, God. We want a deeper encounter, God. We want more visions, God. We want to see Jesus. We want to open our eyes to see Jesus, God. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation come in the knowledge of you, God. 
O shakare korama o shata se tere be shikoro. O shatare durola masa tare shandro go shatoro babo. I just put all my affections on you, God. I want to. I'm gonna think on what is true, what is pure, what is holy, what is righteous, what is full of glory, what is full of manifest light and tangible substance glory, manifesting the honey glory, liquid clouds. All these goody things, the the golden glory, the honey glory, the Shekinah glory, the Kabod glory, the presence of the Lord. I thank you for the living waters. I thank you for the anointing, God. I thank you for the angels. I, <laughs> I thank you for the sauce, God. I thank you for the life more abundantly. Hallelujah. I thank you for my 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 cell phone, God. It's uh, it takes videos. I don't even need a whole bunch of my. I just need the simple little tools, and we can we can in, <laughs> release the nuggets. We can multiply the talents, God. We're not gonna bury nothing. We're just gonna loose it. <laughs> release the seeds. <laughs> just scatter the seeds wherever the wind takes them. Let them go and birth righteousness holiness hope joy peace you know faithfulness patience let's let all the fruits of the holy spirit just come and just be exploded out through our very being god you're the vine and we are the branches and so let that fruit just pop out of us god and that will just flow into everyone around us even the dead will be hungry <laughs> And then they'll taste that fruit and see you that, wow, you are good. Like, yeah, you know, they'll glorify our Father in heaven as we just shine the light of Christ through our very being. Not bowing to the enemy, but bowing to the King of righteousness, bowing to Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. As we walk with him <laughs> on that narrow road, not going to the left or going to the right, just walking straight. We set our face like a flint towards you. <laughs> we just lock on. We lock our heart. We lock our gaze. We lock our, we face our mouth. <laughs> Everything, every part of us is just focused on you, God. Yeah, those, the fire in your eyes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, we just lock on <laughs> that eternity that just oozes through you. <laughs> <laughs> we lock on to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. First time I ever saw Jesus was in a mirror. I was looking at my reflection and my hair grew out. <laughs> my eyes turned from brown to like eternity blue. And it was like this realm came out of them. And I knew that I was supposed to go hug a man. <laughs> God appeared to me and basically said to me, he didn't use words, but listen, you are my body and I want to use my body to go hug that man. Now get back in that sanctuary and you go hug him. Yes, Lord. I was more than willing <laughs> And I went and hugged this dude in front of everyone, broke the fear of man off me, broke all these things. And his wife came running up to him and they hugged. It was, it was glorious. They, <laughs> wow. I didn't know that this guy was like uh, going up to the pastor and saying, where's that blankety blanket worship leader? He's cheating. He's sleeping with my wife, this old woman. <laughs> I was sick for three weeks. I had like uh, the flu or something, so I didn't show up to church. And I guess his he was having a fight with his wife, and they split up for a while. It just happened to be the same time. I don't even know who she was. Like she would just come up with her kid and talk to me at the end of the service, and whatever. Fire on his life. God wanted to humble him. Humble everyone got humbled by a hug. <laughs> you know, it was the wisdom of God. <laughs> foolishness with man but it was total wisdom it's like man this guy's cursing the worship leader guy and uh he's falsely accusing him and uh his marriage is falling apart 
how do we fix this? <laughs> Lord, the angels, you probably hear them, right? And he's like, oh, we'll just make them hug, don't worry. <laughs> I love the wisdom of God. <laughs> it's a hug, man. Fixed everything. Whoa, shaka. <laughs> oh, wow, I feel that. Hallelujah. Sometimes, man, all you gotta do is just hug. Hallelujah, man. <laughs> you know what a hug is? You know what happened when I hugged the dude? Jesus hugged him through me and boomed him. <laughs> I started crying. <laughs> there was so much love coming through me. It wasn't even me, it was Jesus. Because we really are the body of Christ. And he wants to use his body to hurt, to, to hurt, to hug hurting people. He wants to heal the brokenhearted. He wants to hug them and embrace them and fill them with his love. <laughs> oh man, I'm enjoying myself in the Lord. I love God, man. The stuff he does is just beyond comprehension. Not comprehension, because he helps us comprehend it. Just beyond understanding why he would use dust and just fill it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's <laughs> practice the presence of the Lord. <laughs> you know, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're believing in him, you and your house will be saved. Saved is like that presence of God. We're coming back into order with the Lord. The body, soul, and spirit. I wish above all that your soul would prosper. <laughs> you would prosper as soon as your soul prospers. Listen, get everything right in your spirit first. Then your soul will prosper. Then your body will prosper. It's like the kingdom of, the kingdom of God coming, flowing out through you into, and just like illuminating the kingdom of heaven around you. So your body, soul, and spirit is just in perfect sync with God. And then it's like you become who you are in heaven. You'll be on earth as you are in heaven because you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So you live from your spirit, man, on the earth. Your, your soul is not uh, trying to rule over your spirit. Your spirit is ruling over your soul so that you're living like, oh, the presence of God, the joy of the Lord, the fruits of the spirit are, are just, they're, they're the ones that are in operation. And uh, they're the one, wow, man, I'm tripping out. <laughs> Oh, wow, I think I'm hallucinating. Help me. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Lord. Okay, I just... Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Shaba. I think I better lay down for a while. <laughs> he makes me to lie down in green pastures. <laughs> Sometimes he's got to make you lie down, like, calm down, man. <laughs> then you'll get a, <laughs> you know, lead you beside still waters. Like, he'll lead you, okay, it's time to move on again, you know. But you need to lay down and <laughs> calm your soul. <laughs> calm your soul down a little bit. And, you know, just rest. Rest in the peace of God, you know. Hallelujah. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about now. Oh, yeah. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> And you and your house will be saved. Sozoed, you know, healed, saved, and delivered. Because you're opening up the heavens as you are like an open heaven. As you keep your fling wide, your heavenly gates, and the King of Glory will come in. The King of Glory will come in. Whoa. Was that a. Was that. You saw that? <laughs> what? I don't know. If I, I'm hallucinating, man. Oh man, Jesus, Shaka. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> Every time I talk about that, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your host will be saved. It's because you're aligning your spirit with your soul and your body. Everything's in perfect order, okay? I'm seeing these things, man. I don't know if you guys see it. I thought I saw it on the screen. I don't know. I've been, I have to watch the video again after this. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just using my cell phone, my Galaxy, Galaxy Note 3. <laughs> I, you know what? I asked the Lord. I'm like, God, I didn't ask the Lord. I, mean, I was struggling yesterday because I'm trying to figure out how can I make a four hour video and it keeps on like, uh, it keeps shutting off the video at 1080p. <laughs> All this technical stuff. At 1080p, I can go for 33 minutes. At 720p, I can go for about an hour and an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. And then it shuts off at four gigs. So I'm like, wow. And so that I finally downloaded this this selfie app or something. I'm recording through a selfie app right now, and I can lower the resolution and everything down to like 15 frames per second. You're watching this video at 15 frames per second. That's five, five, five. I see that everywhere. Grace, you know, <laughs> it's 15 frames per second. So you're getting like just nonstop grace, just frames per second. You're getting like grace every second. <laughs> no, really, I did see that everywhere. Like, all, like I parked in front of a 555 car, like right in front of my house. It's everywhere. <laughs> These license plates. And uh, so, Shaba. And then I found out how to make the videos up to four hours. And I just lower the, I lower the, what do you call it? The resolution, humble myself under the mighty hand of God is depend upon, it's the substance. It's not even how good the video looks. I still want it to look kind of good, but it's just like the substance. I want you guys to catch the anointing, capture the glory that's flowing in my house right now. <laughs> capture God. Because the same, I have the exact same Holy Spirit that you have. If you've made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life. It's not like I have a different God. I have, you know, God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost living and dwelling in this temple. <laughs> you know? And he's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And, uh, hallelujah. So... What was I saying? Oh yeah, so I can my I can make my my videos could go up to four hours now using my cell phone. That's kind of exciting. So I'll make her some. I'll be probably you'll probably be seeing some longer videos because this is what I like to do. This is I don't know. I injured my wrists uh, a few years ago, so I, I'm not working right now, and the money is really really tight. So I just I don't know. I just live by faith, walk by faith, and. That's cool, whatever, part of my life. It's not about money, it's not about anything. I want to give, I told God, so I will always make my messages free. So give me some good stuff. <laughs> I'm never gonna charge money for what I freely receive. You know, my relationship with God, people say, I pay such a price. Well, pff, no, Jesus paid the price so you can have a relationship with him. I paid such a price to walk in this anointing. No, you didn't. Jesus paid the price for you to walk in the anointing. Quit being so self-absorbed. No, you don't understand. I gave up my family. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> it's because the demons in them are fighting the light in you. Just keep walking in the glory and quit taking credit. <laughs> you know, sh you're not of this world. Our kingdom is of a different dimension. Just let that dimension flow through you and then it'll touch your family. Don't be religious. Just let the kingdom of heaven flow through you. Pray for your family. I used to bawl my eyes out for my family. I still pray for my family. You know, but my true family, you know, Jesus, like, they, they came to the door and they said to Jesus, uh, your, your mother's here and like, or something like that. And they're like, who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? And then he pointed out his disciples. You know, it's those who hear the word of God and do it. That's your true family. Your true family is the body of Christ. Not because we're, we're not, we're no longer associated with the things of the flesh. We have, a, we're associated with New Jerusalem. <laughs> we seek a city that is above. You know, <laughs> we're on earth as we are in heaven. So Shaba, our natural family. That's fine. God put them in our life. I love them. They're my yeah. They are my natural family. But my spiritual family is my eternal family. So I see from a bigger perspective than this is temporal realm. It doesn't mean that I don't love them. I love them more. The deeper I go into Christ, the more I love them. 
The more I don't want to fight with your sisters and your brothers, you know, you just want to, to release the sauce on them. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, Shaka. So, uh, yeah, I can make four hours videos now. Hallelujah. And so, uh, that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm pla I intend just to sit in the glory like for hours at a time and just share what God's put in my life. And I hope that you guys sow seeds too. You know, it doesn't matter uh, which way. Like, I just happen to make videos. I, I used to go on the street church. I might start doing that again. My friend invited me uh, on Facebook. Uh, was that yesterday or today? I don't know. The days are like a thousand years sometimes. She uh, invited me to go to, to the street church and play guitar and preach and whatever. So I said, I'm going to go if my other buddy goes because... Uh, you know, he's got a lot of glory. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there, there he is. And so I, want, I don't want to go to make this a religious thing or a works thing. I want to go, if I do go, just to release the glory. Just to open up the heavens so that the drunks, like the street people, can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I, did, I used to go to these meetings all the time, man. Just laughing with the, Just laughing with them, hugging them. Embracing them. Some people are scared of them. Why? They're just human beings, man. I don't know, man. I think I better lay down for a while. I gotta lay down. I'm tripping out, man. I think it's, oh, maybe my phone is anointed. <laughs> maybe because I said the thing about this. This. I don't know. I don't even know. I gotta stop analyzing stuff so much. Okay, yeah. I'm sure there was something in here that, that you blessed you. God bless your face. I'm gonna go have a tea or something and just I gotta go lay down for a while. <laughs>